Hey guys, welcome to the channel. I'd say welcome to the shop, but we're not exactly in the shop. If you could tell, I'm sitting in my truck. I'm actually overweight and he picked the kids up from school. But when I got ready to leave, I saw something on the porch and I said, you know what? I'm going to shoot a video now because I am too excited to wait. I ordered up a new WEN rotary tool kit and it came in the mail today. So you know what that means? When I get back to the shop in a little bit, we're going to unbox this thing and check it out. Be sure to stick around. getting the kids and it is time to open up this box like I said in the truck I ordered up a new when rotary tool kit all right this is supposed to have like I think it ah, I think it was a hundred piece set it's supposed to have a flex shaft carver and the when rotary tool and everything this was like 30 bucks I have Amazon Prime so that gives you free shipping so for $30 it was the whole setup it sounds pretty good so we're gonna go ahead and open this up, unbox it together, get a close look at what we've got in here, and uh, kind of check it out. All right, so there's a lot of tape on here. Let's see what we got going on. We open the box, and it's a tool bag. There's nothing else in the box. Get rid of that. And let's... Uh, you know what, let's open up the little zipper. So there's a little zipper here in the front, and then we got a big pouch in the back. Open up the small pouch here. All right, that's where all our bits are. A couple extra collets and some sanding wheels and things. We'll bring it in here so you guys can see. This seems to be the kit that comes with it. Mostly looks like, uh, like fine sanding things, you know. There's not really gonna be uh, really heavy duty wood carving bits in here from the looks of this. There's one you might be able to uh, do a little bit with, but I don't think you're gonna be able to get crazy with it. Here's a little bit better look for its contents for you guys, better look for you guys. So you get a few things, nice little case, you know, not bad. I mean, it's not super sturdy or nothing like that, so you're not gonna go throwing it around or nothing, you know, but nice little case. Nice little bits in here, some uh, polishing stones, grinding stones, sanders. This here is one you could shape some wood with. You got a little, it's like a little burr bit, kind of. I've used these before just to kind of smooth in some corners and give it a nice little rounded texture. A little brass brush, that's brass. You know, clean up some metal pieces that you don't want scuffed. And then just various other little diamond type bits. We got a di diamond type bits here. We got some stone sanding bits there. And, you know, you guys can see what it is. So that's what we got in that case. Let's set that aside. There's nothing else in that pouch. And that pouch actually has pretty thick padding right here. Maybe so that case doesn't get smashed if you're moving it around to the job site or maybe you throw it in a drawer when you're done just to uh, help protect it. So, all right, let's open up the main zipper here and see what our, uh, our main contents are. There is a little clear pouch here. We got a few things inside. Really, this is a light. When you're using the Dremel, you can put this on the end, and this piece has two LED lights. So there's a little switch actually on the back. You guys can see. So if you're working on something you need a little more light, I guess this would come in pretty handy. A few screws on the backs, so take it off, probably replace. They're probably just watch batteries in there, I would assume. We're looking at a little pouch. It's got a wrench in here, a drill bit, a couple different drill bits and wrenches and things like that. We'll get to that in a second. So you got this little thing here, so you can do some cutting in your sheetrock and stuff and be able to cut it out. I actually used this with the Dremel in the past as a mini router for doing signs. I put little pieces of wood on the side, screwed them in, and then I'd use that for sign making when I needed really, really fine lettering and I wanted to carve it in. A little tough trying to get some bits that would do exactly what I wanted for that purpose, but it worked. A little grinding shield. Also got our flex shaft. 
So the head on this one looks a, a lot smaller than my uh, Fordham the head, and it's also smaller than the head for the Dremel. If you recently watched the Dremel tool video where I put the flex shaft on, I'd say this one actually feels a little bit lighter. Those lighter tools are going to come in handy. It'll do a really nice job for that fine detail work, because that's kind of what they're meant for anyway. Now looking down at the shaft, something I see that I do like is it's a square shaft. So it's kind of got a square look instead of being like a key shaft where it's just kind of flat. So you got a little more meat to it with it being a square shaft. So maybe it'll hold up pretty well, you know, we'll see over time. Again, time will tell how well this is actually gonna hold up. What else we got? Is there really anything else left in the pouch it comes with other than your um, directions and use kind of stuff, safety and all that, you know. Talks about the tool in here, I'm sure, our bits, assemblies and, and different things, what different bits are for, how to change them out. And so we'll be able to find all that here. I'll keep that right with this. So looking at the tool itself, um, I don't think the weight's any different than the Dremel. There's probably specs right online. You could actually compare the weight if that was something you wanted. So this is a 1.4 amp tool and it can range from 8,000 to 35,000 RPMs. We got a dial back here that you can move up and down for those speeds. Um, this is definitely not a brushless motor, which I never said that it was. I'm just letting you know it's not. So you've got these twist deals here, right here, which normally means there's brushes in there. So, you know, when it wears out or it's not working right, you'd have to take those out and get replacements. Now, I've seen tools in the past actually send you extra brushes, but I guess they don't. That'd be something we'd have to look for online. If I get a chance when I'm on Amazon putting all this up for you guys, I'll look and see if I can find replacement brushes for this. If I can, I will leave it in the description below along with a link to this whole unit right here. Just this um, and probably my dust mask, a couple other things that I use quite often. Over there, you guys can purchase this tool or anything else through those links and it helps support this channel and what I'm doing. We've got three different size collets that come with it. This means you can put different size bits. The shafts are all different size bits. I believe the lower one is going to be a 1 8 shaft. And you can see how fine they get. I mean, they get really, really tiny. That's pretty small. I'm not sure what you're going to put in there. I don't even think I have anything that would actually fit that small, but... Looks like it'll definitely be one eighth or smaller for the uh, shaft for your tools. Now let's look and see if we can figure out how to put the, uh, the flex shaft on here. Maybe we can use this thing. Pulling the flex shaft out just a little bit. You guys can see it on my shirt here, maybe. There you go. Kind of pull it out some, it says. Not too much. There's a bunch of grease on it, so you don't want to get sawdust and dirt in there. Let's move you guys in closer though. Get you guys down here so you can see better. Hope you're still with me. Hope you didn't get motion sickness. Use the 1 8 collet for attaching the flex shaft. So we're going to have to use the bigger one, which is the 1 8. Let's put that in. So once that's in, it looks like we got to put the nut back on that goes over it. Hold our button in. So we can twist it down, otherwise the whole thing spins. Now, we're not tightening that. We need to keep the collet nice and open and loose. So there's gaps. You guys can kind of see there's gaps. It's not cranked right down tight. I mean, it's, you see what I mean? It's just in there. And then all that shows is you take the key shaft and put it in and it stops right at this little piece on there. They got this little piece pressed on. So it's in. So at that time, I'm gonna turn it, grab the wrench that came with it and tighten that up. So we'll push this in, push our button in so nothing spins. Tighten everything up. Let's push this on all the way. Push it up so it meets and then just thread it on. So there you go. You got a flex shaft tool all together. It's actually pretty quick if you just went ahead and did it right away. 
Pretty simple to do. All right, guys, so I got my flame bit burr in here. And I just kind of like tightened it down just a little, but I couldn't go very far because there's no button to push. Well, in the pack, in the package, there's this. It's not an Allen wrench. It's just a round piece of rod. And it's going to slip into the side here. Probably fits this way too. Yeah. So then you can take your wrench that comes with it and tighten this thing down. So you're tightening down that nut, which is tightening down the collet to keep your bits in. This setup is actually a lot like the Fordham setup. This is how Fordham is used. They have the wrench and they have a rod. They're usually tied right together and then you have them together all the time. So this setup isn't bad. The nice thing with this setup compared to the button setup is you don't have to worry about accidentally hitting that button when you're carving. So here's my new Dremel one. This button, if you were to like slip and hit that, it's gonna grind and you know, be bad for it. But with this setup, you have nothing like that in the way. Here's the tools to tighten everything and loosen everything up. So when you're done with them, you can just set them back in the pouch and there they are. Now you're ready to go. So I'm not gonna hang this. I'm gonna just kinda set it to the side. I've got some bark here from a maple tree. It's, uh, it's actually some pretty dry stuff. I've had it laying around for a while. I'm not sure how this is gonna do laying down, but we'll, we'll see here in a minute. So I got this ready to go. I've got this cool piece of maple bark. I'm gonna try to put like an old man face in there, a wood spirit. They aren't really my thing. I don't do a whole bunch of those. So let's see what happens. So this does have a power switch right here. As you can see, it's turning very slow. It's already turned down to one. That's max speed right now. That thing cranks pretty good. I think I'm going to get it up to about three. Alright, I don't really have a design in mind, but uh, come over here. Let's see, so you guys can see. And uh, yeah, just start something. Well, just from using that a little bit on this bark, which is pretty dense, it is, it's it's pretty dense. I would say that tool works pretty decent. It feels like it might be a little underpowered to really like be hogging stuff out and trying to get a ton of material out, but I think for fine detail work and sanding, it'll do it. And I think if you're just starting to carve and starting to want to do this stuff, so I think if you're looking for a tool to get into that detailed stuff or get into carving, this might be the tool for you. It does come with several different bit options, but it doesn't really come with something that you can really carve well with. So you might want to look into a good burr bit, you know, whether it's from Sabretooth or Cuts All, or even if you go over to the hardware store and see what Dremel has lined up, because they've got different bits in there. It does come with that round bit that I showed you, which that could be enough to get you started, you know? I mean, for less than $35, if you have Amazon Prime, I think it was $31 and change, you get everything that I just showed you. Everything except this burr bit. This burr bit is from Sabretooth, and I think it was like 17 bucks maybe. Um, but yeah, this you could use this kit though to get started in carving. I mean, you can do the little bears that I've done in the past with this thing. Hit them with the chainsaw and clean them up with this tool right here. Very versatile. I mean, if you guys have seen my other videos that I've done fish for that desk and things, I'm using tools like this. In that video, I'm using my Fordham Carver, but going forward, I'll be using tools like this to do the fine detail work. And the reason is, it's very light. This whole hand piece, I mean, it's just because it's plastic and it's small, it's very light and that is important for me because it's less fatigue and when you get into that detail work you don't want to get fatigue you're really trying to concentrate and really you know work that stuff around and, and carve it out nice and easy and make things closer to perfect when you're getting into that detail work and I think these lighter hand pieces and these smaller tools are going to be really good for that 
Now, how long is it going to last? I don't know. I really don't. Time's going to tell. It'll be one of those things where I'm going to use it quite a bit, I think, in some upcoming projects that I just have. Whether they make it to video or not, I'm not sure. But if this thing kicks the bucket prematurely, I'm going to let you guys know. Um, if I have any issues, I'll shoot a video and you guys will know about it. But right now, I think it's going to be really great for what I'm going to be using it for. You know, if you're carving in pine, you're carving in softwoods, it's going to do everything you want. If you're going to try to carve the trees like I have been in the past videos with this, if you're really trying to hog that out and take a lot of material away, you might have some difficulties with this um, flex shaft. You might have to switch over and put it direct to the motor to get the power you need. But I th it, it could be done. It's going to go a little slower and be a little more time consuming. But it's going to be a great addition to my tools. It's something I'm going to use quite a bit for my fine detailed work like I've been saying. So if you're new to carving though and you're looking for something, this might be a great option for you. It's it's cheap. It uh, It's got a lot of different attachments and things as I've already gone over. And so it's just something to consider. If you guys have enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Again, be sure to check the description below for links to Amazon for these tools and parts and things that we're talking about here today. You guys purchase through those links. They help support the channel. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Here you go. I've got like half a face that you can't even really see. All right, all right, I'll point it out. We got an eye, an eye, the nose, a mouth, and some fuzz. It's a stuff. Right? It's a start. That's it.